Hey folks, how's it going? I uh, wanted to make another video now that um, version uh, 0.16 for Wolfpack is out. Uh, a few things, several things were changed in game. Uh, a couple of them um, really necessitate making a new video, uh, especially with regard to uh, plotting techniques, because I've been playing around in the tutorial a little bit uh, in order to educate myself as far as uh, what the actual visual range is on the surface during the day in clear weather, um, and that in, that that information coupled with the fact that we now have a stabilized UZO, um, which I, granted was not not historical. Obviously, it couldn't have been historical. I could say probably with almost 100% certainty that it was not stabilized in real life. It, it was purely a uh, a set of binocular a high powered set of binoculars set upon a, pest, a pedestal uh, that, that had electric um, connectivity to the TDC and had a firing switch on the side. Um, so, I mean, it, it certainly wasn't stabilized, but uh, the use of the stabilization in the game, coupled with the use of um, no, now knowing how far away these targets fa essentially fade into view, uh, it allows us to uh, to replicate real-life plotting procedures as described in uh, several several sources, uh, U-boat sources, whether that's uh, books that were written by skippers or um, or even the U-boat commander's handbook, um, and so uh, the the method that I, the new method that I've arrived on for for surface plotting using the UZO will make the video that I made about UZO range finding previously obsolete. Um, there is no need to get out of the game and put a screenshot up in Word and then measure it or whatever. It's just a very convoluted way, but now that we have that stabilized UZO, what I've been doing is I've been putting, I put a couple of marks. I get, I got out in the tutorial, I got out to 9,000 meters from a target having the solution shown. Uh, so I knew exactly it was 9,000 meters away. Uh, and then what I did was I, I, um, I used, I marked the top of it, that target's funnel and the water line. Again, if, if you've watched my other videos, you know I use the funnel height, a funnel height of anywhere from 22 to, to 24 meters. Um, I don't even I don't even use the recognition manual for range finding. I just don't do it. I use my range. I base my range based on funnel height, and I do that also at range. Now I make my marks with a with an erasable um, uh, fine tip uh, marker on my screen, so that I know and so that I know at all times whether or not that target is getting closer or farther away. Now, how is that not a cheat? It's not a cheat because of the following. So you've got you got several references to this procedure uh, in, in real life having been done. Um, and, and the book U977 is, is a great example of this. The um, the, the skipper of the former, uh, former skipper of U-977 um, wrote the book, but he he describes in the earlier part of the book in in pretty good detail um, when he was just a crew member on another boat. He describes a the the the, the process upon sighting a ship and tracking it and plotting it in somewhat good detail, better detail compared to some other books I've read. But basically, what he describes in there, and what what is consistent with the U-boat commander's handbook, is um, he describes the skipper when when the masts come over the horizon. Now, granted, the horizon is a set distance away from a U-boat bridge; it's about nine thousand meters away, which is probably why they arrived at nine thousand meters in the game. Nine kilometers away is the the distance from the horizon from a U-boat bridge. Now. What does that mean as far as hull down? Hull down, ships could be anywhere in reality, up, probably up to the range of 24 kilometers away, assuming you're just looking at either the smoke or the very, very tips of the mass. Now, so therefore, a ship wouldn't, if, in a, on a clear day, a ship wouldn't come into view at 9,000 meters. It would come into view at the, at 24,000 or 26,000 or whatever. Um, but that knowledge, the skippers would certainly have had and did have, and it can be it can be derived to the formula as far as how far an object is beyond the horizon, as long as you know how much of that object is hidden by the horizon. Um, 
no, I'm sure they, I'm sure they weren't up there computing with, with on the bridge, with computing with, with, you know, square roots and all this other stuff, but they didn't have to, they, they would, they wouldn't have, they would have a, a general reference height and they'd have a reference range that they would just use. And, but, but the key is, is that they would, and this is described in U977, he would, he sight the target, he'd put, he'd put his stern on or bow on, usually stern if you don't want to just barrel toward the target, with the purpose of, dis, of, of determining which way the bearing was changing. So he knew which way, whether it was going right or left. When, it, when it's a hell down ship, you just, you obviously can't just readily look at the angle on bow and know which way he's going. So, um, so he would ascertain which way it was going, and then he would turn 90 degrees to his that to that first turn, essentially, uh, and then he would watch and he would see if that uh, um, if that bearing was or excuse me if those mast heights were getting smaller or larger, and then he would turn um, if they if they got smaller he would turn to toward the target, and, you know, and and if it, if they got larger he'd turn away again. He was just constantly doing that. Um, and, and providing at five minute intervals, providing the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 navigator with uh, okay, these hyperlinks work when it's in regular PDF, but they don't work here. Um, providing the navigator with the rough range and angle on bow at regular intervals, um, and the navigator would be would be plotting obviously own course and then plotting these, and then knowing at all times that the uh, that the skipper was keeping those mast heights relatively constant above the horizon. So with that knowledge, um, I'm just trying to find the mention of this in the, here we go. With that knowledge, the navigator would have all he would need to establish the plot, the, the course and speed of the enemy ship. He knew, uh, he knew the skipper was all, was always keeping that. No, the skipper was also providing rough range estimates, but, but generally the skipper was trying to keep those mast heights constant above the horizon. Um, and in doing so, all the navigator would have to do is just plot the same distance from every bearing, from the from own sub at every bearing line, and there is his track, as long as he's confident that those ranges are consistent. And uh, um, so, so cut to the U-boat commander's handbook here. Here you have it in paragraph 113. Fighting your way up to a forward position at the limit of visibility is an extraordinarily lengthy, lengthy and tiring uphill battle. It's an incessant sawing at the horizon going in again as soon as the mast tips get smaller, and immediately opening range again as soon as the mast tips get taller. With the visibility conditions, blah, 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 this is just, um, you know. But um, I put the note in here. This is my retranslation of this. This is why this, one of the reasons of why I retranslated because there's, there's these little nuggets in here uh, of, of, of knowledge, these golden nuggets in here that are just lost in translation. Uh, or the utility of them isn't entirely clear, so I added some notes throughout here, but here you go. This sawing had another purpose, that of plotting. The UZO had no range-finding capability. How range, roughly, was determined was simply based on how much mass was showing above the horizon using a standard mast height or set of mast heights. This bearing, rough range, and AOB was communicated to the navigator at five-minute intervals, and the navigator made a plot on millimeter paper. Um, also, by keeping the mast heights the same height above the horizon by sawing, and thus knowing he's at a relatively constant range as a result, has also provided a clue as to the target's course of speed. I put a clue. It really is. I mean, it's more than a clue. I mean, it's, you know, if it, you can, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have seafaring experience, okay, but I mean, I, I would think that it would be somewhat, particularly for a trained naval officer, some relatively easy to say, okay, that mast height looked like, looked like this at the first bearing. Now, five minutes later, it's it should be obvious that whether it's gotten bigger or smaller, right? Unless well, unless these guys had you know short term memory loss, which they certainly did not, they could remember five minutes in the past and say, okay, well that the mass is clearly different now. Um, so I wanted to start this from the beginning, from this from this screen here, um, and I'm, and and have you with me the entire time. Granted, you know that's not how I typically would make a video. I would cut it and then cut back when when something else relevant was coming up, but in the interest of, of, of not having any smoke and mirrors, so to speak, um, I'm going to keep you with me the whole time so that I, you know, I'm not, that I'm on the level with this. So, uh, I go to my U552 here, start the mission. So in the tutorial, uh, as you all are likely aware at this point, 
uh, the uh, you're you're at you're you're in the daytime and all the targets are relatively close by here so uh, I'm just I make some preliminary settings to usually to the TDC but I'm not I'm only just gonna set UZO now so I can get the bearings um, but at any rate I'm gonna get up here we'll, we'll just get a lay of the land here and the, all the targets are gonna be pretty close by here they are um, oh that guy's coming right at us and then uh, there's that guy there so that's the guy right there I think there's three targets here uh, I'm gonna open since he's already behind us and he's presenting relatively perpendicular course to us. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go full speed ahead and, and open the range to what I think is uh, 9,000 meters, and I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use a funnel height of about 24 um, of about 24 um, uh, uh, meters at this point uh, for this, uh, and I've made my marks on my screen uh, in such a fashion that. Um, uh, that the corresponds to 24 meters at 9,000. So what I what I basically did was, um, you have to be careful when you first start in this. You need to select diesels first, and then full speed ahead, because uh, it will default to electric engines if you just go full speed ahead. Uh, I realized that uh, when I was doing this last time. So I'm going to open the range up here. Um, but what I would recommend you do, and what I did, is I got in the tutorial here, and I just, on my own, and I just, um, I got out to a to a range of 9,000 meters. Well, first of all, I got out, I wanted to see what the true distance was, visible, visible range, vis, visual range was in game, so I just, that was, that was purpose A, and then purpose B was to get to a good, uh, solid range at which they were, you know, which which would somewhat approximate the limit of visibility, so to speak, um, in this game, and and that's that's about nine thousand meters. And so, uh, so I got that range, and I, I went in the map, and I did show solution, which I won't do now. So here we go. There's nothing on the map. You have you've not seen me turn this on yet. I will do it at the end once we've plotted. Uh, and the end is is not going to be torpedoing the ship, it's going to be making a plot after probably 15 minutes of worth of plot, and then um, turning the solution on and comparing. And hopefully, it's somewhat accurate. Uh, otherwise, I'm redoing the video, and you won't hear this. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it'll work here. So, uh, so I'm, at this point, it's pretty obvious. I'm just, I'm just opening the range up right now, just so that we get um, out to a range that uh, the corresponds with about 9,000 meters, uh, and um, um, not you know not going to look in the recognition manual, not going to look at the solution on the um, on the uh, on the map prior to doing this. It's just purely going to be uh, you and I just uh, figuring this out together, uh, and then and. You know, be starting out just as in the dark. You're starting out just as in the in the dark as I am. Um, you can't obviously see the marks I've made on my screen, but I, I've made marks with the erasable marker on there, uh, and I suggest you do some something similar to that because you just don't have the um, the reference point in Wolfpack that you would in real life. That reference point being the masts showing above the horizon. You know, as you watch. Um, to run into this guy here. As you watch the target in this game over at, at, at intervals, it can be hard to determine without some point of reference whether or not he's growing or shrinking. And so, uh, hence the hence the reason why you need to make some sort of mark or some sort of measurement that you can hold, a measuring device or something that you can hold up against the screen. So here we go. Now here's our UZO now. Um, no more, you know, Buck and Bronco stuff here. Uh, it was particularly pronounced at a 90 degree an uh, angle here, 90 degree bearing. Now here you go. I'm, I've let go of my mouse. There's, there's none of that stuff anymore. So, um, that's what made me realize, hey, you know, here we, here we can just, you know, put that up here. So, so just, just to give you an idea, um, I've put my marks on my screen along down the. Uh, along the bearing line but, but only two marks 
and they're only about um, that like maybe a quarter of an inch apart, maybe if that. And I've just made two marks, and what I do is I just bracket the top of the funnel and the bottom of the uh, and, the, and the bottom of the ship, so the water line and the top of the funnel. I just hold the hold that up up there in, in the UZO, and then I know um, first of all what about nine thousand is, and then second of all after after five minute interval, I know uh, I can then I can then gauge whether or not the target's gotten larger or smaller, and then I can adjust course uh, and speed as necessary to maintain uh, a plot. Uh, so of course now you know with this just it's just so shaken out that we're gonna uh, just gonna turn in a little bit here so we're not on a total collision course with this guy and then um and that'll give us but i, I also do want to stay somewhat on his beam so that uh um so that you can so that we can we can uh it just would almost be a little cleaner that way and maybe more might simulate more uh, a, a true overhaul scenario where we're sort of a beam or even aft of the target when we start uh, and so uh, yeah and so th so so this coupled with the fact that uh, the, the tutorial coming in coupled with the fact that I, I did just reinstall Silent Hunter 3 uh, and no it's not because I'm losing interest in Wolfpack but it's simply uh, I, I refresh my memory on the work of uh, an individual that went by by the name of Hitman on Subsim, and I really owe most of what I know uh, about targeting historical procedures, uh, a lot of what I know about historical procedures, etc., from the work that he had done for Silent Hunter 3. He did a, uh, a great GUI in their user interface that um, that was, I mean straight off of historical documents and he, the UZO site picture was correct and the scope picture was correct and all this other stuff and so it was just a great great thing and um, uh, he had put as an accompaniment to his uh, to his GUI he had a couple of manuals in there one of which so he had the GUI manual which was really just obviously geared toward using the tools in the GUI but then he also had one called the U-boat torpedo attack and that went through um, a lot of the procedures that's, that are in my tutorial as well. Uh, went through uh, what 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 a what a skipper did upon sighting a target, what and what sort of the courses of action that were taken in order to determine course and speed, uh, and in different scenarios. I also had a good one about uh, U-boat optics as well. It was really a great a great piece. Uh, he he had access to the Zeiss uh, optics archives to a certain extent. He had some access to some periscope documentation, uh, historical periscope documentation, uh, contemporary historical uh, documentation about the periscopes. He really had some good stuff going. And uh, uh, again, like I said, I, I almost what I know to him. Uh, and I use, I use those procedures in game. But uh, I'll have to check with him. Uh, he's still around. Uh, he's not as active on Subsim as he used to be. But I will. Uh, I will check with him. Now you'll notice here to those of you who have not been in here. This these targets are not. Uh, they don't react to you in tutorial. They, they just it's lambs to the slaughter here. But that's great for instructional purposes like this. So um, so anyway. But uh, I'm just going to turn now that we're past him a little bit. Who who would think we'd get a little pilot pilotage practice in here while we're doing this? But uh, um, so at any rate, um, Hitman's uh, work was great, and I, I'll have to research or excuse me, reach out to him uh, to see if it's okay for me to distribute the stuff on Subsim or excuse me on Discord. But um, uh, really really good stuff that he had there. A couple of good documents that, that would be helpful to people um, that are that are not. Uh, stuff that's just purely historical st stuff that can be implemented in game that's not dependent on one one sim or the other uh, so but but basically in it he describes a lot of what I described already in terms of you know, you turn bow or stern on to the target ascertain the bearing change now you know which way to go but you know a skipper would also think okay what are the most likely routes that this targets taking or what are we is this a heavily uh, an area heavily patrolled by the by air um, 
you know, and, and get a get a, not only a decision point as far as whether to even to even go through the attack, but also get an idea of which um, of which way the uh, the target is going. Like, where is it, where is it ultimately going? What's it, what what is it steering toward? Um, and at that point, he would turn to what he what he would consider a parallel course to the target, and then um, he describes in there that the same type of thing that's consistent with my uh, with the U-boat commander's handbook. He, he would uh, uh, keep the keep the masts at a relatively constant um, range, or a constant distance above the horizon, and then know that he's. Um, and and then and have the navigator create a plot, and then that navigator would know always that um, that he was they were steering more or less a um, a course that was that was giving them a constant range to the target at every bearing. Well, now the nav all the navigator has to do is just like I said before, plot that consistent range, or you know maybe the range changed a little bit, but anyway, this consistent range over those bearings and. Now you've got a plot that's, that's, that, that I would think is pretty accurate. So, so that's the that's the U-boat surface plotting method that I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, again, I'm keeping you with me so that you you know I'm not pulling some kind of funny business behind the scenes here and, uh, and saying, okay, well the course is really this, the speed is really this, and then gaming the game to get it there. Um, but so we're running out at top speed to get out to a uh, overhauling range now now I, I get the fact that your your you range you can get away with less than 9,000 meters on, on the surface during the day in this game I thus far I'm not thrilled with the visibility um, uh, conditions in, in terms of, of sighting distance at night but during the day you can it seems like you can get away with 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 more but so it, you know, in real life, yes, they would stay at the limited visibility. They wouldn't allow, you know, even the funnel to show, because shortly after the funnel comes the bridge, and that's where a lot of eyes are. So therefore, don't let the bridge come over the horizon, because then you're 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 starting to be seen theoretically. Um, so they're keeping this. They they had to keep that range long. Uh, we don't have to do that in this game, but the utility of this is. It's really to establish a standard, a standardized range. Get get the target out and establish the sight picture uh, in your UZO. Draw yourself a reference on your screen if you need to. I I suggest doing it because you, you, otherwise you just don't have a reference uh, necessarily. But get that sight picture ingrained in your mind and then use your use your your reference marks at at five minute intervals or whatever interval you want to use. For plotting and um, see whether it's grown or shrunk and then make your course changes um, accordingly and plot those have your navigator plot them uh, so that you know at all times that that target ship is relatively the same range away every time um, you know you so that that's that's really what 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 we're going to demonstrate. What I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm I am solo in this uh, again, but um, we're getting somewhat close here. I'm I'm just measuring the using the the range, the relative uh, the marks uh, on my on my screen here. We're almost to nine thousand. We're getting we're getting somewhat close. Um, so I'm going to come in here and, and get ready to plot. Um, he's going to be off of our off of our, uh, I'm going to start slowing down now. It's going to be off of our uh, starboard beam when we plot here. Uh, let's see here. I am going to go um, uh, most, of the, most of the ships are pretty slow in this, so I am going to go uh, do my plotting at dead slow. Well, I'll go slow speed ahead to start with here. And then uh, but if you're if you're trying to match course and speed, which I, I also recommend doing that, that's Oost, the Ostamfafan method. I do recommend doing. Oh yeah, okay. Oh my God, we need to turn. These we're almost gonna lose them here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go hard right, hard right rudder. I'm gonna watch him. And make sure I don't lose him. 
in the haze, but there you can see. So that that right there is a good sight picture to have, a good consistent sight picture to have, where he's just just fading out out of view. Um, that's that's what I recommend as you establish um, for terms of plotting. Uh, so I'm going to turn to what is about a 90 degree bearing and we're going to watch him we're going slow ahead I'd almost, I'd almost even do this at um, at dead slow to, to somewhat approximate their speed but you, maybe it's hard for you to see but I can actually still see the the top of the funnel and the water line here and what I'm doing is I'm, I've got my marks on my screen there and I'm just I'm measuring and comparing and so at this point what I'll do is I'll start a plot he's gonna be he's gonna be over here and so I'll say okay um, at you know um, I get my uh, my timestamp ready and I say okay um, and I do need to get my my file open because otherwise I don't have any way of, of converting um, converting true I'm not using anything else in this file at this point I'm just using the um, the attack disk functionality in here because otherwise I don't have a way to convert relative to bearings to true and so come on here with OBS studio open I'll tell you what it really puts a strain on the, uh, the old the old system here so this attack disk is, is what I'm going to use for this. Um, all right, he's already going away. I can see that, so I need to turn. I'm going to turn 20 degrees in and start a plot based on that. So you can see even there. I mean, I was able to determine that 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 target was disappearing on me, um, and so I'm going to turn in a little bit so I don't completely lose sight of him. There he is right there. All right. So what I do at this point is I'm um, I'm gonna just drop my own course, which is 224, into the attack disk here. And I'll do it down here, uh, 224, uh, and then I'll I'll have to get the relative bearing from below, obviously. But I can see that the top of the funnel there, and I'm just gonna say I'm gonna assume it's 24 meters, okay? And he's probably at maybe just a hair under 9,000 meters okay so then at that point what I'll do is I'll make I'll make my mark for plotting uh, here okay I know his um, he's on there all right so then I go down and I get my my range wish we really had that range ring in the UZO God holding out for that so um, we're looking at 72 bearing of 7072 okay so 72 true bearing is 296 so then I'll go in here and I'll plot 296 and I, I, I think he's just a hair under 9,000 um, so we'll go 296 and maybe call it just like 88 maybe um, something like that Six, right there. Okay. Yeah. So let's call it that. I, I just, yeah. So because my marks correspond to nine thousand, he was just a little bigger than my marks were. So I'm gonna call it just a hair under nine thousand. So now we just wait. So at eighteen, at well, I was almost on the minute. So nineteen. Uh, so at twenty, at twenty, uh, twenty-four minutes, we will. Um, We'll take the second bearing, but we're not off the hook yet. So part of this method is you don't you don't, you don't just cool your heels until the next five minute mark. I actually just keep watching, and I watch. I just stay at the UZO and I watch, and I watch to see if uh, if that sight picture starts changing again at all again. Uh, and if it does, then I start. I'll I'll make turns before the five minutes so that I am always keeping. What I think is a rough, uh, what I what I think is, is a relatively consistent sight picture. 
at all times. So it's looking pretty be pretty consistent right now. Um, but but we shall see, I guess. So um, yeah, and if anything, we actually are gaining on him a little bit. He's getting a he looks to be getting a little he is getting a little closer. So I'm going to turn probably 10 degrees um, to port. See, this is the kind of stuff you just you don't know until you until you have a reference um, what that target is doing. So you're always able to. Um, so I'm gonna now that I turned, I am also gonna make a mark. I'm not gonna do a timestamp. I'm gonna make a mark where I turned, roughly, so that I know my own. I can just see my own movements in over the course of time. Um, in, in following the target. You don't really need to do those interim ones, but I, I don't know, it seems to me like it's it's helpful to, to know where, when and where I turned. Not when, but where I turned. So, um, so I keep on watching them. Because ultimately, by the next bearing, it, you know, it'd be nice to have somewhat of a consistent range with the first one. Um, so I may even go a little further out than that. So these these marks here, I don't know if they're I don't know if they're really necessary, but it's just yeah, see this is gonna give me problems here. Okay. because um, I wanna make sure that when when the time comes when, when we hit twenty four that we're still at um at about nine thousand. So we we open that range up a little bit to stay consistent. So um so my my thought with this and is I don't do this and I don't recommend doing this like for the duration until you're all the way around the target really just 15 10 no not 10 but really 15 minutes or so of this of this type of plotting uh to be able to um uh, to get it to establish the course and speed of the target, and then um, at that point uh, go full full ahead and really overtake him. And uh, you, uh, the, the book U nine seven seven actually um, actually describes that as having been done out of visual range. And uh, more on that in just one second here. I'm going to make my second plot. All right, so we're at about five minutes I'm gonna put my next timestamp down and then I'm gonna just measure and I think I think he's actually come even a little closer than the first range so there's the bearing right there um, so whoops I gotta get my own course that's hold on Another one step there because um, obviously to convert convert relative to true you need your own course so we're now we're at 205 so one course is 205 so his bearing is um, and it's just even a hair just a hair closer than the other than the last bearing or than the last range excuse me 90 we we'll call it 94 so 299 is the new bearing and that so 299 and I'll just say you know Maybe just a, a, a little, just a little less. Two nine, two nine nine is somewhere in there. Two nine nine at like maybe eighty eight or eighty seven. There. Okay, so then I'll make a mark there. So now, now what I can start doing actually is I can start, uh, I can start establishing a course line, and I can start comparing angles on bow to what I what I see. So in order to do that, again push the space bar um, and then go to the bearing line or, or vice versa well with the, really the bearing line is probably the easiest thing to do and you can see there that it's just a hair over 90 right now it's so like 92 so then let's go and see if that's jibed with what we are seeing right now you know we have the luxury in this game of somewhat being able to, to gauge the angle on bow um, 
at all times. And it's like, yeah, I mean, he's a little hazy, but that seems that seems pretty reasonable. That's about 95 or so. So, um, so looking at my at my my relative ranges here again, or my, my markings anyway, it's still staying pretty consistent with the um, pretty consistent with the um, with the other two. So I think we're in pretty good shape so far. Um, ultimately, I want them to fit exactly in that in those two marks, but um, but I'm not quite there yet, and so uh, so I can open um, I can open the range, or it, it even I could even match his course now if I wanted to, um, and say okay, his course is two two twelve or so. I could go. Um, Well, I want to go further away. I don't want to match his course because that's, that's going to put me a little closer to him. I don't want to do that. So I want to, I want to go maybe 10 degrees uh, to port, and then see if I can't open the range just a hair to get us to where I think is 9,000, which is which will fit us exactly in those two, in my two marks. So this is this is the, you know, call it that nibbling at the horizon exercise. This is what I interpret it as uh, based on the sources I've read. Um, but anyway, what I, where I what I was saying before between the bearings, uh, so nine will be our next one, um, is a U nine seven seven. Once they get the, once they get the target course and speed, once they get the gen, the the base course, they had a zigzagging target, so it takes a little longer to figure out. Um, but once they had that, they actually they dropped out of visual, they dropped about a kilometer outside of visual range, and then they accelerated to overtake the target, and then. They they were dealing at that moment with a very uh, very fast target, and so they um, they it took them hours upon hours to get ahead of it. Uh, but what they describe is getting outside of visual range, and then every hour going in to check to see if the target was still there. Uh, and that's actually that's actually somewhat that's actually somewhat interesting because. Um, because I I wasn't until I read that book I wasn't aware of that practice I just was always just I always just assumed that um, that these guys just kept the target in visual range and that was just standard operating procedure was just nibble at the horizon so to speak or saw at the horizon until until you were essentially ahead of the target but and then I came across um, an old post on subsim oh there's nine right there sleeping sleeping here all right so there's that I'll look again so we got about um, okay. So it's a little further away than our last bearing. He actually his range has opened up just ever so slightly. So there's the bearing. Our course is two zero five again. So I'll keep that in there. Go get the bearing. Um, so the relative bearing now is ninety seven. So ninety seven three zero two. And like I said, it's further away than the, the the last bearing. Probably a little more consistent with the with the second uh, with the first with the first bearing we took. So, uh, what I say it was three zero two. Oops, three zero two. Three zero two from this point here. Zero two. So it's probably between yeah, it's pretty somewhere right around in here. Three zero two. Okay, so then. Um, so then I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete this and refair, refair that course line, um, and then and then again compare the angle on bow again. So now we're at here, and now I'm going to say it's there, which is so we're looking at it more of a just a hair under 90 at this point, 90, 87 right there. So we'll we'll go and compare that. Seven or or eighty seven. Yeah, it does. It it does actually. I can I can sort of see the front of the bridge just a little bit. So it does seem to be that it is just a hair under ninety. So I think our the course is, is turned out to be somewhat accurate here. Um, but anyway, I came across this. It's called the uh, um, uh, in German Faultafel, which is the V dash table, 
V table. Um, and what it is, is the V stands for Vorsetzen, or Vorsetz maneuver, which in German means that's the overhaul maneuver. It basically means the putting yourself in front, the maneuver to put yourself in front of the target. And in, 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 in this German sense, that meant directly in front. That uh, the, the U-boat commander's handbook recommends you don't dive until a zero degree angle on bow is achieved. Um, and so that's what um, that's what that's that's what that's getting at there. But that it was a it was a document from from about 1943, and uh, it, it basically describes it's not a not the method of getting course and speed, but getting. Now I'm going to turn in because he's starting to shrink a little bit now again. Um, it's a method of once you've got course and speed of a, of a convoy or a ship or whatever based on uh, like it, it, whether that whether you determined it yourself or whether it was provided to you by way of a contact report or BDU um, it was a way for you to it was a way for you to steer a curve outside of a minimum range from the target so that could be any range and there were several tables and I don't have access to the whole book but there's a on subsim there's a post that made me aware of it that has just small excerpts from the book and it has the instructions in there which is really all you need um, to recreate it well I'm recreating it now but um, it has the curve called the v-curve that you steer basically courses and times to steer that will ensure that you never it's basically a maneuvering board solution of never getting bully oh, I can speak tonight never getting below um, a minimum range to the target and um, so 34 is what our next bearing is here uh, never getting below a minimum range to the target and so I started making these tables myself using um, a maneuvering board application and trying to trying to, to figure out what the course is and, and, and redoing it I figured out how to do it however I did it based on a range of 9500 because I thought that was closer to what the visual ranges and it is close to I would be more comfortable doing it 9,000 uh, but that that brings you over the if you think about that it actually the way it the way it ends up taking you is it takes you outside of visual range and it just ensures you never get below a minimum range um, and so I uh, I thought oh, I thought to myself oh that that's actually pretty consistent with oops okay there's our mark right there so we're gonna mark and I'm gonna I'm gonna compare and I think now now he's almost fitting exactly in those marks which I think is about 9,000 meters so I'm gonna do here's the bearing boom what's our course our course is uh, 215 so 215 go get our relative bearing down below uh, and then we'll be able to and then I think this will be our last plot point here in the video but uh, so 80, 89 degrees is the relative bearing. So he's at 304, and like I said, he's right about 9,000, I think. So we'll see how that lines up. 9,000 here. Whoops. Need to reset the. Ah. Why am I. Why is my ruler not. Or, uh. Okay, why is that not working now? Oh, X. X resets it. Bah. Um, what did I say? 304. 304 at about, about 9,000. We'll see what that gives us here. Let's see, 304 at 9,000. Yeah, and see, that that's getting, getting to be right about there. 304. Okay, so that's that. All right, so then we're going we're gonna to compare uh, with... Um, with uh, with actuality now, so, so, so watch officer give me a drum roll here, uh, and we'll see what, what we're looking at, show solution, alright, so we were, you can see we were a little off in terms of, we were a little off in terms of his, his, pl his course, his, his track, okay, uh, but not by much, and that that amount of offness is because it's, it's purely driven by mass or by funnel height by discrepancies in funnel height by using a um, 
by using a standard value for funnel height, it's obviously going to throw you off because it's it's obviously not going to be consistent among all targets. However, the um, um, the the key is in what is when we measure speed and course. So, so the, his course is um, or his angle on bow is 81 degrees. Okay. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just I'll I'll see what his I'll run the whoops I'll run a line down here along his course line and see what it is what we said versus what what it is it is 206 206 degrees or so okay based in, in, in reality and then our course line was um, was 209 so that's actually pretty that's pretty close okay it's within a few degrees and then speed wise we knew this is a 15 minute interval here so um, you could do it however however you want you can do it by hand or whatever um, but I you we can do this now um, and, and get it a little more exact so we'll see what the um, what the speed between okay so this is 13 14 um, whoops um, let's go a little inside of it so we don't get Ah, get locked onto this is one thing that drives me crazy about this. So it just locks you to the whatever. Let's just go. It's gonna be pretty close. 14, 14. Okay, so then that's um, a little fast. Whoops. So we had said 14, 17. Um, so ours has him going a little slower than this. So let's try 7.1. Um, 13, 14, uh, that right there, that's it, that's about 15 minutes right there, um, so 7.1, 7.3, that's pretty close, okay, that's pretty close, so, um, so, a speed within 0.2 knots, and a, and a course within 3 degrees is pretty good, okay, uh, for this method, and so, uh, that's why I recommend using using a standard funnel height, whatever you choose. But but just keep in mind that they're anywhere from 20 to 24, or really 20 to 24 meters in 22, 23, 24. You can decide what you want to use. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty accurate method, and, and getting that sight picture established um, for a long long range like that allows you to replicate historical plotting uh, procedures in, in the game by, by getting a reference uh, re some reference points either on your monitor or maybe on paper or something like that calibrating that so that you always know um, how far away that, that target is because now here's the other here's the, ca the caveat to that if I won't use this unless it's a clear day because unless you unless it's a clear day, you don't have the luxury of um, of a of a hull down of a view of the horizon to be able to gauge hull down ships. So if you want to talk about self-imposed limitations, okay, um, that that would be that would be one of them. Where you know if it's not a clear day, you think to yourself, would I be able to see the horizon? in this particular day and, and here it's like okay it's if it's clear then the answer is probably yes so um using that information then then you then i would say use this method otherwise you're it is a cheat if you can't it, if you couldn't in real life really see the horizon and not be able to gauge gauge that um so at night um i'm not even a proponent of plotting at night um i typically matt do what the what the real skippers did and that's that's matching course and speed on the surface um basically turning parallel you can see the you can see the angle on bow you're close enough to, at night to see it pretty well you can match course and then use that use that 10 slower functionality in your and your eot to ratchet your speed down such that you basically match course and speed of the target and that's good enough data for you Assuming the target's not changing course on you, that's good enough uh, data for you to uh, to work with, for sure. So, um, so at any rate, uh, uh, so yeah, so I mean, there there you go, folks. I mean, that's just a comparison here. Um, two o was what now? 
Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna draw the actual uh, track out here, um, just for comparison's sake. So that's that's about right, right there, um, and draw it back so you can see kind of what the differences are. So a little, the course is a little off. Whoops, right there. Course is a little off, but three degrees, and so therefore the speed is off by a little bit because of the because the ranges were, were off a little bit. But again, the speed, as you saw, was only we clocked it at about uh, seven to seven point one knots versus seven point three. I mean that is pretty darn close, uh, and that's not using the recognition manual. You saw you saw this evolution from start to finish. Um, I, I'm not using any information that isn't readily available to you in watching this video. So at that, I will call it quits. And uh, so this will supersede the UZO range finding um, video that I put up before. I will remove that from YouTube. So at any rate, uh, thanks for watching and take care.